Good morning. My name is Michael Barber, and I'm president of Branch 25, San Francisco of the Royal Canadian Legion. Before we begin today's service, I want to acknowledge that the land throughout the San Francisco Bay Area is the unceded territory of the Ohlone, Miwok, Kushia, Patwan, and Wapo peoples. Following the gold rush of 1849 and California becoming a state in 1850, the United States government began the stated process to establish formal relations with the tribal communities. The unstated intent was to extinguish indigenous title to the land and forcibly move these peoples to areas that were not desired by whites. Throughout 1851 and 1852, three commissioners negotiated with tribes up and down the state, creating the alphabet treaties, Treaty A through Treaty R. However, the U.S. Senate would later fail to ratify any of these treaties. It is important to understand that both the existence of these treaties and their contents were held in secret until 1905, which meant that for over 50 years, the indigenous tribes of California had no right to exist. Additionally, while the U.S. government were negotiating these treaties, the newly formed state of California was passing laws to authorize and pay for the extermination of indigenous peoples or to provide for their enslavement. Today, as we remember those who have bravely answered their country's call to service, we should also remember and acknowledge the people indigenous to this land, their culture, their language, and their freedom, all of which were stolen from them. Now to today's service. Welcome to our third annual Commemoration Day virtual service. This service began as a way to re-engage with the Canadian community in the Bay Area during the early months of the pandemic following the cancellation of many of our regular in-person remembrance activities. As many of our members are located throughout and outside of the Bay Area, as well as many who are located throughout the United States, we've continued this annual event. For Newfoundlanders and Labradorians, the 1st of July is not just a time to celebrate Canada Day, but also a day in which we remember the tragic events of July 1st, 1916, and the Battle of Beaumont Hamill. Originally designated as Commemoration Day, but more commonly known in the province as Memorial Day, we've continued to use the traditional and statutory name for a virtual service to differentiate it from the U.S. holiday of the same name. Like our previous virtual services, we have reached out to a variety of Newfoundlanders, Labradorians, and Canadians from coast to coast to coast to provide an informative program of remembrance that showcases the talents of our province and country. We begin today's service with the raising of the flags by our late comrade Fred Rutledge, which was recorded last year, followed by the singing of the Ode to Newfoundland. The Ode is a video that was provided to us by Emile Bador, who recorded it at the National War Memorial in Ottawa on Canada Day in 2019. It features the Governor General's Foot Guards Band and an unnamed choir from Newfoundland.
Next, I'd like to ask the Honourable Steve Crocker, the Minister of Tourism, Culture, Arts and Recreation, to say a few words on behalf of the Government of Newfoundland and Labrador. Hi, I'm Steve Crocker, Minister of Tourism, Culture, Arts and Recreation for the Government of Newfoundland and Labrador. Thank you to the Royal Canadian Legion Branch 25 for the opportunity to take part today. Today on Memorial Day, we pause and remember the loss of life on July 1st, 1916, the first day of the Battle of the Somme at Beaumont Hamel. Sadly, about 800 men with the Royal Newfoundland Regiment went over the top and only about 68 answered the roll call the following day. Over 100 years later, the events of Memorial Day, especially those at Beaumont Hamel, still resonate deeply with Newfoundlanders and Labradorians. We mourn those who lost their lives. We reflect on their bravery and we preserve their memory. And we continue to honor those who serve today. Today is a reminder that freedom comes at a great price. We will not forget. Thank you, Minister Crocker. For those of you who are unaware, 2022 is come home year in Newfoundland and Labrador. So the province is welcoming expats and visitors alike. Next, while he has had a parallel career as a writer and businessman in St. John's, Bob Hallett is best known for his role as a member of Great Big C. One of the songs on their 1997 album Play was The Recruiting Sergeant, which told the story of the Royal Newfoundland Regiment during the First World War, and in particular, the impact that the losses they suffered had on the colony of Newfoundland following the war. This particular version of the song features Bob on vocals and music by the Royal Newfoundland Regiment Band of the 37th Canadian Brigade Group, 5th Canadian Division. The visuals are public domain images from Newfoundland and Labrador Heritage, the Rooms, the Royal Newfoundland Regiment Museum, and Veterans Affairs Canada. Sergeants came to the CLB for the sons of the merchants to join the blue puttees. All hands enlisted, 500 young men. And Mr. Newfoundlanders, and come follow me. They crossed the broad Atlantic in the brave Florizel. And on the sands of Suvla, they entered into hell. And on those bloody beaches, the first of them fell. Enlist you Newfoundlanders, and come follow me. It's over the mountains and over the seas. Come brave Newfoundlanders, and join the blue parties. We'll fight the hot in Flanders, and in Gallipoli. Enlist you Newfoundlanders, and come follow me. All came from London for the last July drive To the trenches with the regiment, prepare yourselves to die The roll call next morning, a handful survived Enlist you Newfoundlanders and come follow me It's over the mountains and over the seas Come brave Newfoundlanders and join the blue parties We'll fight the hunt in Flanders and in Gallipoli and list you Newfoundlanders and come follow me. Follow me! The stone men on water street still cry for the day when the pride of a city went marching away. A thousand men slaughtered to hear the king say. And list you Newfoundlanders and come follow me. It's over the mountains and over the seas. Come brave Newfoundlanders and join the blue parties. We'll fight the hunt in Flanders and in Gallipoli. 
and list you Newfoundlanders and come follow me. So it's over the mountains and over the seas. Come brave Newfoundlanders and join the blue putties. We'll fight the Hun in Flanders and in Gallipoli. Endless you Newfoundlanders and come follow me. Endless you Newfoundlanders and come follow me. During the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation's coverage of the 100th anniversary of the Battle of Beaumont Hamill, Tom Power, host of the popular CBC radio program Q, himself a native Newfoundlander, spoke about the power of music and songs to be able to convey history. He said, we're 100 years away, and there is still an effort to make sure that we remember this for years to come. And museums have a wonderful place in that, and articles have a wonderful place in that, but sometimes songs can be the best way to transmit this knowledge. There's much truth in that sentiment. How many of us can recall the specific information from the last museum exhibit we visited, or the salient details from the last historical article that we read? But even in this multi-generational audience, I'd bet that most, if not all of us, could sing along to It's a Long Way to Tipperary, or Danny Boy, or Walsing Matilda, all of which tell a story from World War I. So we thank Mr. Hollett and the Royal Roofland Regiment Band for continuing that tradition and sharing their story to commemorate this historical day. Moving on, following the First World War, there were five battlefield memorials built in France and Belgium to commemorate Newfoundland's accomplishments, contributions, and sacrifices during the First World War. The first of these caribou monuments to be placed was the one at Beaumont Hamel in 1925, followed by Goudicourt, Manchi le Prou, Mansnir and Courtre. Eventually, a sixth monument was placed in Bowering Park in St. John's in 1928. However, the Trail of the Caribou, as it became known, was not completed until last year when the final Caribou mon monument was placed at Gallipoli. At this time, I'd like you to travel with me to the foot of the Caribou statue at the Beaumont Hamill Memorial Park, where Parks Canada guides Emma and Jacob both proud Newfoundlanders, will place a commemorative wreath. This will be followed by the act of remembrance led by our chaplain, Dennis Edmondson. They shall not grow old, as we who are left grow old. They shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. I'd like to thank Emma and Jacob, and in particular Jean-Pierre Gabou, Senior Program Advisor in the European Operations Directorate of Veterans Affairs Canada, for his assistance in arranging that video. And thank you, Comrade Edmondson. Next, in 2016, the CBC commissioned Shani Ganuck frontman Chris Andrews to write a song based on letters and stories submitted by Newfoundlanders and Labradorians from their own family members who had served during World War I. Two weeks before the 100th anniversary of the Battle of Beaumont Hamill, Shani Ganuck debuted One More Will Stand at Canadian Forces Base St. John's, and CBC Newfoundland were on hand to broadcast the performance. We are fortunate that Mr. Andrews has provided his permission for us to include that recording in today's service. Thank you. 
Came from harbors, bays, and coves, from the towns, even Labrador, to join and fight the forces for the king. Their decisions were made somberly, but most of them left poverty. So they left their homes and went to fight a war. All different kinds of men were there, some were old and had no fear, some just kids who lied about their age. Got a uniform with socks to the knees They were labeled the blue puttees And as they marched down to the boat Each man did smile and sing As one does fall, one more will stand We will fight for Newfoundland Over on a foreign shore Most have not returned to home we'll Fight hard on the land and sea In Boma, Hamill and Gallipoli For king and for country you and for me. When first upon the other coast, we spent our time in Egypt most, under desert sun and pyramids. Thought we wouldn't find ourselves there long till we were marching to our own song. On a heli shape, they tracked them to the front of France. The battleground is 20 miles, and the Germans have one hold outside, but we have the other in our grasp. And in between a lonely place, barbed wire trenches holds the stakes, the barren place that they call no man's land. The barren old who holds the hour to be in the zero hour They tried to blow the lot to smithereens But what they didn't realize It only helped the other side By warning them and eliminating trees It finally came our time to go And the Germans they did surely know They mowed most down in about two minutes flat and the few that made the danger tree Found out with most uncertainty No bridges there, no barbed wire cut The end was there, they're sitting ducks Newfoundland, over on the foreshore, most 
Memorial University College was founded in 1925. It was established as a tribute to the Newfoundlanders who had served or died during the First World War, hence the name Memorial. Still today, there are reminders of the university's commemorative past throughout its campuses. From the Memorial Tower and Veterans Memorial Court on the main campus in St. John's to the Danger Tree sculpture on the Grenfell campus in Cornerbrook. Each day, the staff in both St. John's and Cornerbrook Turn a page in the replica copies of the Newfoundland Book of Remembrance, the same book that is displayed in the Memorial Chamber of Parliament Buildings, which contains the name of every Newfoundlander who died serving their country prior to Confederation. The University has truly lived up to the words inscribed on its memorial wall, that in freedom of learning, their sacrifice might not be forgotten. At this time, I'd ask Dr. Vianne Timmons, President of Memorial University, to say a few words. One of the privileges of being president of Memorial University is joining the people of the province at the War Memorial in downtown St. John's on July 1st and to lay a wreath of remembrance on behalf of the university. It is important that we remember what July 1st and the entire tragedy of the Great War means for our university. At a meeting on January 22nd, 1919, a proposal was put forward to consider erecting in St. John's a memorial for our sailors and soldiers in the form of an educational building which shall raise to a higher level the whole status of education in Newfoundland and Labrador. We continue to deliver on that dream so that to use the words taken from our university memorial wall, in freedom of learning, their cause and sacrifice would not be forgotten. The success of our university has been shaped and will continue to be shaped by our special origin. At our university, we carry our responsibility as a living memorial with us every day as we work to make things better for our province, our country, and for the entire world. I am proud to be part of Memorial University, a university that remembers. In 2025, Memorial will celebrate its 100th anniversary. As our first century of excellence ends, we look forward to an ever brighter future, one that will forever look back and honor our origins. Thank you, Dr. Timmons. Next, I'd like to call upon Branch 25 Piper, Charlie Martin, for his rendition of the taking of Beaumont Hamill, also known as the 51st Division of Beaumont Hamill. This piece was written by Pipe Major John McClellan of the 8th Argyles and Southern Highlands, a regiment that fought alongside the Newfoundlanders at Beaumont Hamill.
As we begin to close today's service, I want to call upon our chaplain, Dennis Edmonds, to deliver the closing prayer. This will be followed by the singing of O Canada. This particular version of O Canada was created by Rev 52, a Calgary-based performance ensemble. It starts with a prelude, beginning with the Cree word, Mamowa, which means all together. This is followed by beautiful poetry about Canada's journey, potential, and hopes for the future by Governor General award-winning Richard Harrison. The actual arrangement of O Canada is performed in Cree, French, and English. Today, we remember and pay our respects to those comrades whose death we mourn and whose spirit still lives. May we strive to promote unity and the spirit of comradeship, never forgetting the solemn obligation we have assumed as members of the Royal Canadian Legion. And remembering them, may we ever pray, Lord God of hosts, be with us yet, lest we forget. Lest we forget. I love unfinished things, the bookmark set between closed pages, the field that waits for seed. Canada is a place like that, a history incomplete, a traveler turning around and wondering at the distance gone, the distance yet to go. What was there, Canada? What is ever there on a country's road, but times when we were glorious and times of things no one should have done? Our anthem understands, words of pride with notes of mourning, and the music of resolve to finish and turn towards the road ahead. Here is a place to say, we go on, not as before, and so keep faith with the best of what we are. O Canada, it is a complex love that keeps us together, and all the more true love for that. Ka-Canada Thank you to all the members of Rev 52, and in particular, Artistic Director John Morgan, for that performance and their permission to include it as part of our event today. This brings us to the end of our service. I want to thank you for attending. For those who are in attendance who may be unfamiliar with the background of the Battle of Beaumont Hamill, we end each of our Commemoration Day services with a five-minute video from Legion Magazine's Military Moments series. 
This particular one was narrated by Newfoundlander Gordon Pinson and was produced as part of the 100th anniversary of various Canadian milestones around World War I. Before that moment begins, I'd like to once again thank all of those who contributed to today's service. While I've been providing individual thanks following each portion of the service, I would be remiss if I did not mention my comrades in Branch 25, San Francisco of the Royal Canadian Legion, and members of our United States Naval Sea Cadet Corps, Arkansas Division. Our branch would not be able to undertake the activities that we do without their involvement, and we are truly thankful to them. Finally, thank you for joining us today, for the live stream, or for watching this recording on YouTube. Take me back to dear old Blighty, put me on the train for London town, take me over there, drop me anywhere, Birmingham, Leeds or Manchester, well I don't care, I should love to see my best girl, puzzling up the game we soon should be. Italy, Italy, I see, hurry me home to Blighty, Blighty is the place for me. July 1st, 1916, marked the first day of the Battle of the Somme, an offensive against Germany by British and French forces on both sides of France's Somme River during the First World War. The village of Beaumont Hamel was just behind German lines. The offensive there started at 6 a.m. with an hour-long artillery bombardment of German positions. At 7.20, 10 minutes before zero hour, 18,000 kilograms of explosives were detonated in a tunnel dug under the Hawthorne Ridge Redoubt, an important German stronghold west of the village. The explosion alerted the Germans to the attack and gave them time to man their defenses and arm their weapons. The Newfoundland Regiment and the rest of the 88th Brigade waited back in St. John's Road, a reserve trench with dugouts that protected them against German shells. The Newfoundlanders' mission was to go forward, but they walked into a complete disaster. At 8.45, the Newfoundland Regiment was ordered to move on the enemy, but the trenches were choked with dead and wounded from two earlier waves of attack. So the Newfoundlanders didn't use the trenches. They got up on top and simply walked over open ground. Some 780 men swarmed over the battlefield, weaving their way through the zigzag gaps in the British wire before reaching no man's land. They were the only ones moving on the battlefield and they were silhouetted on the horizon. Every German gun in the area was trained on them. Machine guns cut through the Newfoundlanders like cordwood. Many fell before reaching their own front line. A few made it to a clump of shell-blasted trees where the Danger Tree Memorial stands today. But most were struck by guns trained on the gaps in the wire. The Newfoundland Regiment was decimated in a matter of minutes. <laughs>
Royal Newfoundland Regiment has a storied past, but of all the stories, none is as captivating or tragic as its advance during the Battle of the Somme on July the 1st, 1916. One hundred years later, the event still resonates deeply with Newfoundlanders. Every July the 1st, while the rest of Canada celebrates the birth of a nation, Newfoundlanders mourn their losses in the Great War, and especially those at Beaumont Hamel.